Michael Jarrett obviously did, we'll start there with Sam um, obviously decided to, to challenge it felt like it was a just a normal football tackle if you like yeah, yeah. Obviously, the club sees fit that um, probably didn't, you know, didn't look at warranting a week. So yeah, um, the club will look to challenge um, what, what that they've handed down. What did you make of the tackle yourself? Um, to, to be frankly honest, um, haven't looked at it closely enough. But you know, within the rules, there was no sort of free. It was like you know, it's play on type thing. So I think um, Pep plays that way, plays aggressive type footy. So, um, but we'll, we'll see what the outcome is tonight. Just on um, Sam's game itself, it's like he's taking his game to another level. He seems to be thriving under you this mm. year. How have you seen his yeah, he's, he's, he's had a different role this year, um, sort of splitting his time between midfield and up forward. And uh, I think he's really got the balance right as he accepted his role. Um, it's, been, it's been sort of like you know, a good couple of years for him to accept that role um, and not just being that inside mid. And yeah, look, he's um, playing a selfless team role for us as well. And it's not just based on numbers. Um, on the weekend, he got more of a football. Um, but the role that he's playing is a selfless team role and he's splitting his time between mid and forward. And there's a credit to him and the growth in him as a footballer. Sorry, uh, Todd Marshall, Ryan Burton, some chance those two boys could be back this week. Yeah, yeah, along with Connor. Um, they've been ticking a lot of boxes, the three of them. Uh, yeah, in their recovery, you know, we returned the play. Um, so we'd expect them to you know, get some training in this week um, for more reports. Um, yeah, they're tracking well. So, yeah, if we, by the end of the week, um, you know, if we're looking at any one, any one of them, um, hopefully the two or three of them that we'll be looking to play. How is Connor's shield? He's obviously been rested for a couple of games. How's that management worked out? Yeah, as I said, I th he's tracking really well. He's, he's ticking boxes. Um, yeah, he's done a lot of lot more running last week, towards the end of last week, doing some agility this morning. Um, but for him, you know, we want to make sure we get it right, um, you know, because obviously there's significant sort of, say, he'll uh, inhibit him his performances a little bit in terms of um, being able to sort of see out games. Uh, so we want to make sure that he's right when he does return. And But as I said, he's, he's ticking a lot of boxes and um, along with the other two as well. The other one is Scott Lyson. Where is he sort of that with his knee? Yeah, it um, was a little bit sore after the game, um, but as a ruckman, when you're jumping all the time, you're going to be battered and bruised a bit. I uh, haven't seen him this morning, but for more reports, he's pulled up well, um, so we'd expect him to be fine. Um, because of what's happened with Phil Adams, who would come in in that sort of situation if he was in this? Um, I don't know if it's... You know, if, uh, it's an interesting one, um, but I think uh, we've, we've shown we've got lots of options. Um, so without pinpointing... Who would come in, and I don't think it's anything about whether Pete. Um, Pete, Pete is obviously out of the side, but it's, it's like, I suppose you can look at it. He's like an injured player, so he's not available for us. Um, but we've got lots of options that we can use, and we've shown that throughout the year as well. Just to hurt the club in this situation, where you have a player such as Peter Lambs who's come, with, you know, come in leaps and bounds, then goes out on the suspension, um, and then you all, all of a sudden you might have an injured ruckman goes down, and then you're left in the lurch. Does that hurt your situation? Oh, as I just said, I don't think it hurts our situation. Um, it is the situation, uh, is the circumstances uh, we're presented with. But we, as I said, we've got options um, um, should it get to that. But uh, Scooter's pulled up fine. We expect him to be fine. Um, but as I said, we've got options available to us, not just relying on Pete Adams. I think um, some commentary came forward to suggest the ban might be extended until the end of the year. Is that the first you've heard of it? Or, um, What's that, sorry? Oh, that's news to me. I don't know anything about that. Um, and just on this week, Sydney, obviously it wasn't a great performance, but you got the win against Hawthorne. What do you see the club at the moment in terms of the way you're uh, we're, we're playing good football. Um, are we playing our best football? Probably first minute, probably not. But um, we're sitting on top of the ladder um, for a reason, because we've been consistent and we've been able to find ways to win. Um, we were challenged by... Uh, a real hungry Hawthorne side that had some experience out, um, but we withstood the uh, the pressure uh, and the challenge. Um, but it's a challenge for ourselves to make sure we keep backing up week to week. Um, it's been a challenging year in itself, a condensed year, and uh, but we found a way to win, uh, and I think that's the real positive. Um, with some players out, uh, and we've, we've we've shown that we've got greater depth than what we've had previously. Sammy Durson was a big dropping, obviously. Um, Kenny said he was dropping form. How did he go here on the weekend with the scratch match? Do you see him possibly coming back? Yeah, he, once we get the selection, he'll be one that um, we'll look closely at, along with Farrell. Um, Drew was impressive as well. Um, there was a number of players that obviously played in that game, and it was good to see them play some footy because some of those guys haven't played for about a month. Um, but as you said, those guys that did go back um, in Farrell and, um, 
and Dersma um, performed really well, um, which is what we expect. We wanted them to go out there, play with some freedom, and uh, get their hands on the football, which they did. And where's Jack? What's that? I know he had that two week game to go home for a family for a week. How's his fitness now? Is he back to scrap uh, to speed? Yeah, yeah, he's, he's, he's still got his challenges in terms of uh, the body holding up for him. Um, he's had a bit of a, a, sorry, a back issue um, of late, which has probably held him back from being on the park consistently. But he's doing everything in his power to make sure he gets right. Um, and the positive thing about Jack is that his spirits are positive. Um, he's getting around the boys, so he's such a really good clubman to have around. Um, but we got to make sure as, a, as teammates and, and coaches that we support him as well, because he has had a challenging time over the last 18 months. Um, I'll just change the tack a little bit. Um, there was an abusive message sent to Zach Butters after the match. What do you make of this sort of stuff when you know, players are just out there doing what they uh, get paid to do, but unfortunately have to cop some of this as well. Yeah, it's unfortunate. Um, I suppose that's social media. Um, but I think, um, you know, as long as we support Butsy in, in these times, um, it's just unfortunate that we've got people in society that choose to um, comment um, or make those comments. Um, but how we sort of protect Zach and anyone that's involved in those situations is uh, our focus and, our, and you know, where our sort of importance lies. Um, but. Yeah, you don't give those people too much credit. Even me talking about it now is giving them more traction than what it deserves. Um, one last one. Um, grand final bid is being put forward today by the SA government. You've played in the grand final, you've gone to Melbourne. Mm. What would it mean to have it potentially moved here to South Australia? Oh, it'd be a massive experience for the fellas. You know, if um, we were fortunate enough as a club to be a part of that, um, it's a long way away, but to have it in the city of Adelaide, um, it'd be massive. Um, you know, coming from Perth, um, I know they would, you know, in terms of just being sort of that uh, two team sort of um, cities, um, to have it here in Adelaide, um, I think it'd be a wonderful experience for uh, all footy followers. Um, so, yeah, we'll wait and see. As someone who's played and one, someone who's had to travel, what are some of the unique experiences that you've gone through that potentially you might be able to save other players from going through being a local? Oh. I think the experience, I, I don't think there's any advantages as such. Um, it's just more the hype and the experience of the, the build up um, to such a massive day. I think that you'd really embrace. And I think the fortunate thing if it was in Adelaide is um, a lot of family and friends can get there and support it. Um, I think that'd be the main thing to have that around you would be a real positive.